Al, we have reached the end Mm -hmm. of you experiencing the Yakuza series. Yes. Technically, sort of. Well, games that have Yakuza in the title. Yes. Yes. Key differentiator there. (laughs) Yeah. Because we're going through Judgment right now. Yes. And I'm replaying 7 because I'm playing it by myself now. Mm Mm-hmm. But yes, this is this is our our final stretch here and our Al experiences the Yakuza series. It's been a long road. It has been a long road. When did we start this journey? That's a good question. That's something we should have had queued up. Yeah, that is something that we should, probably should have looked up. Um, February. February. Wow. Well, that's when we did the Yakuza Zero episode. But okay. Earlier in the year, around February, probably. So when we started this whole journey. Yeah, wow, we made some pretty good progress. And here we are. Mm-hmm. The final the final game to experience yep. in yep. this series. Which we're gonna talk about today here on the Seasonal Iron Checkup OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Al and Lady Um. Hello. This is episode number 236, and of course, what better number to talk about a game with six in the title? Ah, oh, good, good, uh, tying it all together there, buddy. Hey, that's what I'm here for. I tie things. <laughs> <laughs> the tire of the show. It's true. Yeah, if I go round and round, <laughs> I'm like that killer tire from Rubber. There's a movie called Rubber. I think it's called Rubber, but it's about a killer tire. Oh my god! <laughs> Real f- weird. <laughs> Patreon episode win. Oh man, I think I watched that around the same time I watched Hobo with a Shotgun. Oh wow! So it's, it's like that kind of film. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Now I know what to expect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Either way, we were talking about Yakuza Six because I'll experience Yakuza Six. Yes. We have previously talked about this game, so we're not going to go too deep into story stuff and all that sort of stuff, Mm -hmm. uh, because we talked about this on episode 73, Mm -hmm. 163 episodes ago. That was a long time ago. Where we talked about Yakuza 6 and Psychedelica of the Black Butterfly in May of 2018. That's so funny. A little over three years ago. Wow. Wow. A that long was a long time ago. ago. Long time ago. A lot's happened since then. A lot has happened since then. You're right. <laughs> You're very right on that. Oh, Al, going into this game. Yeah. You knew a few things. Yes. You knew about throwing a baby into the ocean. I knew all about throwing a baby into the ocean. You knew about Beat Takeshi. Yes. You knew about Tatsuya Fujiwara. And he's, like, the main thing that I remembered besides throwing a baby in the ocean Mm -hmm. was Fujiwara. And... Question mark. (laughs) Um, That you like the engine because of bikes. Yes. Which we'd already experienced this engine when we played Kuwami 2, so... Yeah. Um, Is there anything else that was, like, a big thing... I remember that you said that there was like a small town feel at one point with the with the game, but mm-hmm. um, that was that's really like the big the greatest hits there. That sounds about right. So most of it, you kind of were like coming into fresh ish. Yeah, because I totally forgot like ninety six percent of this. Yeah. Like, oh, well, I guess the big thing that I did remember is, like, who the dad was. I did remember that. Right. So okay. that that was one reveal that you were just kind of like, oh, okay, I know this. Yeah, I knew that, and I was just, like, trying to piece together, like, the whole time we were playing it. Like, how is he going to figure this out? Why does he not know what is going on? Blah. Um, which, I mean, you got to hear in real time. <laughs> uh, but I, I couldn't figure out, like, how that was going to all pan out and mm-hmm. I eventually did so that's basically all I remembered well there you go it was like fresh new game going into it I love a good fresh new game 
Mm-hmm. I mean, who does? And now I've seen one of the greatest cutscenes to ever exist. <laughs> that's ever. that is that's true. Um, if people ask you, are video games art? You just need to queue up the baby rugby scene mm-hmm. and tell them to observe. And they will never again question our video games art because the answer is an astounding yes. Look at that. That is just beautiful. That should go in a museum. That is true and that's for true. It's like one of the greatest things I've ever seen. I've watched it so many times, even like just in bed at night, insomnia. Like, you know what I should watch? I should watch the baby rugby video. I mean, we all should. It's true. It's true. I'm sure that the world would be much happier overall, just in general, if more people watched the baby rugby video. I agree. Mm -hmm. Like, wars? Who needs that? You can just watch Harto get thrown around a lot by Beat Takeshi. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, Why man, wouldn't oh, you want to see that? You know, you're not wrong. Um, I will make mention here, there are there are some uh, updates to this game that occurred when it was brought over to the PC and Xbox One, which came out earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of those being that there's a little, like, history of Yakuza, of all the Yakuza games included on the main menu that you can kind of go through little synopses of the stories in the newer versions uh the yakuza 2 part is re- has all the screenshots replaced with kiwami 2 screenshots whereas in this it is ps2 screenshots <laughs> yep sure is Just like cool and then uh the yakuza 4 section uses a render that has the the new dude mm-hmm. instead of the old version of tanimura in it the fax machine man yes fax machine coke man yep uh those are Probably the two major differences. Uh, the Dragon Engine physics apparently have also been altered, so they're less t- they're less wild, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of a downgrade, I would say. Yeah. Because man, the early Dragon Engine was just a menace, <laughs> to say the <laughs> least. And then uh, the missions where you have to like calm down Haruto in the early parts of the game basically just have controller inputs instead of uh, you using motion controls because those other consoles don't have motion controls right but that's basically it other than that it's the same game (laughs) uh al tell me your experience with yakuza 6 um i guess i I have a question i have a couple questions for you all right hit me first off Mm -hmm. were you surprised that this was a basically just a cure you game Coming off of the heels of 4 and 5, which were very much, you know, multi-protagonist games. And also, this is also coming off of Zero, which was a multi-protagonist game, which saw the rise of a certain Majima in popularity as a character. And yep. then to come to this game and to see Kiryu as basically the only character you play as, and for a lot of the other side characters to kind of just fall by the wayside. Yeah. Uh, was that a big surprise for you? Um... Yes and no, because this was, like, advertised and billed as, like, the end of his story, Mm -hmm. basically. Am I wrong in that? No, you're right. People Um, going into this knew this is basically the end of the Kiryu story. And so I expected it to really focus on him quite a bit. Um, I was surprised that Majima was in here for, like, maybe a total of six minutes. If that. If that. Um, and same with Zaijima, he's just, like, not there, um, which is wild that, like, you have, like, these major characters that just don't really do much. Mm-hmm. Um, and Akiyama was there for a bit, but he was mostly too busy being a stinky hobo. <laughs> True. Um, it's like, I, I, I like that he was incorporated a bit, um, even if he was not playable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I guess based on the fact that it was built as that, I expected it to be his story. But it is kind of a weird shift to go from like multi, 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 multi to one person and that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you are trying to cap off this story, it makes sense to make him the focus. Yeah, I agree with you in that aspect. Like it is weird in retrospect because of like the popularity of Zero skyrockets the series. Um, 
in a way over at least overseas it does in a way mm-hmm. that I would hadn't been seen before like we've talked about previously so to go from that and then into six where like Majima has, has this new found popularity amongst newer players essentially and he just like hey I'm gonna show up at the very beginning and at the very end and that's it it was like that's a it. little weird and jarring but yeah. I think with the way like you said they build this game and how it's presented to you like it needs to be Kiryu and that's yeah. it like it would feel very weird if like there was a split protagonist or something like that um it just wouldn't feel like this was the wrapping up of a, of a major character story if that was the case no, I agree and like I'm not really sure who would have been playable in this. Right. Um, like the the only character that would even remotely make sense is Fujiwara's character, and even then, like, there's no reason to do that mm-hmm. because anywhere that he's really relevant to the plot in a way that is necessary, Kiryu's gonna be there. So just make Kiryu the playable character. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense, um, so it's not really all that shocking to me, but um, it is obviously a shift. Right. Back to the old days. Mm-hmm. It, it also, you know, like, 3 was the last game that was one protagonist. centric Yes. And, like, in a way, this game has a Yakuza 3 vibe to it. It does. It very much does. Where, you know, it's this new location and everything. You have, like, this little little runt Yakuza family that Kiryu gets to run around with and everything. And mm-hmm. it, it helps that, like, two of the, the main people in that Yakuza family were in Yakuza 3. So. Wait, who was the other one besides Fujiwara? Uh, Nagabo's voice actor. Really? He was the the Nishikiyama patriarch who was, like, a super sleazeball. Oh, wow. He was that guy. Wow. Okay. Interesting. But, yeah, um... Definitely, there's a lot of, like, Yakuza 3 vibes to this game yeah. in that aspect. So, like, it, it, there is a lot of parallels to that, in a way. Um, how did you feel about the, the new location of Onomichi? Um, one thing that I want to mention that is fantastic is that when you go to Onomichi, Kiryu is like, Time to be casual. I'm going to roll up my sleeves. going to take <laughs> off this jacket. But it can't be too casual. i got to keep on my, my snakeskin shoes still. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it sounds scary. Business hysterical. casual. I love it. I love it so much. And I was so disappointed when we went back to Kamurocho and he put his jacket back on. I'm like, no! Um, I liked it, though. Like, it, it felt um, like kind of small-towny, homish type. Mm-hmm. Um, I also really, really liked the, the like poetry stone things that were around. That was really neat. Yeah. Um, it was a nice touch that you could just go and read them. And I assume that they're real poems. I would assume, I've, right? I'm pretty sure I've, I've heard that like they went there and like, that's like one of the first instances of those stones being like translated in a non-Japanese media or like in a, in a non-Japanese fashion. Yeah. Like that's really, really cool. Um, and like you said, it gave me a lot of Yakuza 3 vibes in the sense that it's like a oceanfront area. Um, it's small town vibes. Everybody seems to kind of know each other. Um, and I, I really liked the characters here. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I connected more with them than I did with the ones in 3. Um, whether it's the, the gal at the bar or, um, the the yakuza family themselves uh or you know our our favorite mascot who is actually kiryu but he's he's still fantastic um which man that whole that whole scene with like or the the side story with kiryu and dealing with the the little girl when she's like i'm gonna marry you uh when he's in the costume it was like oh my god this is so good (laughs) this is so good Kiryu, you are dad material. Which, uh, <laughs> they open the game with him, like, putting out the white powder, and you're like, oh, God, what is happening? Oh, oh never mind, it's just formula. Here's your bottle, baby. It's hysterical the way they did that. It was so good. Kiryu's gonna do coke. Just kidding, it's formula. <laughs> Oh, and you had that really great throwback with the diaper. That he's like, oh, nope, I learned. Mm-hmm. 
I know what's going to happen here. Which is you a, can't get me. Which is a funny thing because we were talking about this. Like that, That's a reference to a side story. Yeah. That if you didn't, you never saw that, you would not get that reference. Nope. It was great, though. He's mm-hmm. like, I, I, I know. Um, but I did really, really like the town. Um, and I... I thought it was interesting that there was like a big town secret Mm -hmm. um, because many, many small towns do have like weird skeletons in the closet. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that the, (laughs) the payoff of it was the greatest, but yeah, like I would agree with you on that. uh, But I liked the town quite a bit. And um, when we did the first karaoke song, you have like all the people in the background. It's like, oh, that's neat. And you're like, oh, you'll know them soon. Mm-hmm. And then when we did it again after I'd actually met people, it's like, oh, yay, this is fun. Yeah, that was nice. It's like, oh, I I have friends here. It's, I I wish that Kiryu had been able to just stay there and hang out. There's a real big just like communal vibe that they are yes. able to capture really well, which like for better or for worse, because like when you first get there, everyone's kind of like standoffish to you because you're an outsider and all this sort of stuff. But then like, once you start just like ingratiating yourself into the community and everything, everyone kind of like starts to warm up to you and like get to know you better and everything. Um, It's really well done. You can't buy formula after 8 PM. It's true. Everyone's sleepy. Uh, It's it's also, I think, I wonder if like it helps that they are able to like get that vibe down because like Onomichi is actually a real place. Yeah. So, they're able to kind of like capture the feel of it because like that's the place. If they don't adopt that mascot afterwards, they're doing it wrong. <laughs> I mean, you see that mascot again in in seven, so perfect. I'm just saying the town IRL should definitely have that mascot. I I think you're right. I wonder if like that's even like a thing. <laughs> I don't know, but I mean, it seems like a good idea. Seems like a really good idea. I agree. Yeah, he's he's got his his fancy outfit that he has an important piece for each thing about Onomichi that he has oh, to. Apparently, it's a fictional her. mascot. The worst. They should implement it now since it's a thing in this game. They could just be like, "Hey, here you go. You can use this mascot if you want." <laughs> and then they do, and then it it. Definitely, like, works for the town, and it works for the Yakuza series. Why not? I'm sure they get lots of tourism for that. I bet. Not that they'd really like that, but... um, Yeah, each piece of his outfit has, like, a specific reference, except for... Was it his pants or his shirt that he has no explanation for? I think the pants. I think the pants. That he doesn't about technically right. need pants. I mean, he needs pants. I mean, he doesn't have a specific reason for having pants. Okay, fair. He has a specific reason for everything else on his body, but not his pants. <laughs> Other than, you know, legality of rock- walking around with no <laughs> pants on. <laughs> <laughs> um... I also liked that it had like the the big shrine area, like with the temple, mm-hmm. um, and it had the um, what are those things called? I want to call it a monorail. It's not a monorail. Um, it's like a little lift. Yeah, like that was a neat thing, mm-hmm. and you're not really seeing that. Like, oh hey, I I need to get to this part of town. Let me take this like lift thingy it's kind of cool i did accidentally curse you i'm sorry at the temple <laughs> you did i'm looking at the wikipedia page for this temple oh are you mm-hmm. what does it say it was founded in the year 806 wow that's old it's very old ropeway ropeway thank you thank you thank you 806 806 that's a old temple oh, this is a bit about the, the the stones it's called the path of literature Ooh. with 25 authors related to Onomichi that's really cool mm-hmm. 
So they're all somehow related. Like whether they lived there, or wrote about it, or something like that. I think like all of the poems are supposed to like relate to Onomichi. Okay. That's why they're there. But that's me just conjecturing. Yeah. Because I don't live there. I also don't live there. Wow. Who would have guessed? What? Uh, so yeah. That's the that's the location and everything. Very that's cozy. Neat. I liked it. Uh, what did you think overall about the story? I liked it. Um, I like I said, I think there were some missteps. Like the whole secret of Onamichi thing, I think could have ha been handled a lot better. <laughs> um, and honestly, it it felt kind of shoehorned. Mm -hmm. Like I think they could have come up with anything else, and it would have felt more natural. Um. Even though I somehow pieced it together, <laughs> uh, which I'm kind of surprised by, um, but overall, I think it makes sense that like really a lot of like Yakuza One is establishing like, hey, we we gotta we gotta take care of Haruka, and we gotta make sure that she doesn't suffer, um, and we've seen how much he's willing to go through to help Haruka and how much he cares about her and I think that that's been a very very powerful part of the series and so even though she kind of got fridged for a bit um like it's a continuation of of that I mean for lack of a better word like fatherly instinct and love that he has for Haruka that he's like I, I have to take care of her I have to figure out what's going on I have to solve this mm -hmm. um, and I think that another thing that was really well done in this game is just like they were so able to just show how done he was this whole time right like they really nailed the fact that he was just frustrated and he was just over it and I thought that was really a good thing. Like, that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, especially when you've had a guy who has been, like, for lack of a better word, very self-sacrificing in order to try and fix things repeatedly for, <laughs> over the years of, like, oh, all right, well, everything's going wrong. Guess I got to go back to Kamurocha. I got to fix everything. Great. Yay. Um. So he's he's given up a lot to try and fix things. And at this point, he's just like, I am so done. I still have to fix things, but I'm fixing it in a different way because this is something I'm fixing for Haruka. Mm -hmm. And um, like, I, I just really enjoyed that aspect of it. That he, I mean, he does eventually take the whole self-sacrificing thing to a whole different level <laughs> than he normally does. Um, but just the level of doneness that he's able to show and, and also something that, um, I think is really important about this series. And, um, I think I, I would applaud the series overall for this is, um, they have Kiryu really show so much emotion, even if he doesn't like, st like he's very stoic, but in the way he talks in the way he expresses himself like he is a very very emotional person mm -hmm. um and we've seen a lot of that stoic down and i'm thinking in particular of the scene um in the millennium tower after that cool -ass boss battle mm -hmm. like he was he was very devastated and showed that he was devastated like again he was frustrated he was very very mad um but he was like absolutely broken by that which you know I, it didn't really work out the way that he thought that it went but like a man did just gut himself to try and save his family and mm -hmm. for nothing but i like that because you could very very easily fall into like macho man toxicity type thing here and they don't really do that 
And I think that that's something I really, really appreciate about this series and something that, um, like, I'm kind of shocked about, like, going in and coming out, I guess, Mm -hmm. is, like, how willing they are for their characters, especially, like, their big macho manly man characters to actually be emotional and, like, have familial bonds and really, really care about people. Like, it's it's pretty freaking cool. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just talking. <laughs> where was I going with that? Emotions it, are it, cool. Emotions are cool. It, it, it again, reminds me of um, Joseph Joestar and his, <laughs> and his crying scene. That, like, you see this really, really buff, tough guy who's been tough the whole time, like there, there's nothing that you would think would really break them down. Then once you actually do see them break down, you're like, oh, oh, okay, okay, all right. And a lot of six is him just not necessarily only emotionally breaking down, but he's just so tired. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like this man's seen a lot. He's like what fifty at this point. I'm getting there at least. And he spent like. 15 years of that in prison, I think, if I'm not wrong. Something like that. 13, 14. Um, and, I mean, he's seen almost everybody he cares about die. And in this game, you have the one situation of the person that he cares about most in the entire world and would do anything for that he's not sure if she's going to make it. and like that breaks him even further than he was already broken and it's intense um but you also see like the soft side of him with with harto that he's just like i would do anything for you i would die for you and i just met you mm-hmm. and it's, it's adorable um like he loves that kid even if he you know just puts his butt on his arm and walks him around like he <laughs> that's not how you hold a baby that's that's not how you do that well, they never made Kiryu go to baby handling school. Yo, I have like negative 10 maternal instincts, and I know that's not how you hold a baby, (laughs) but I'm the one who said you should throw the baby in the ocean, and I know that that's not how you hold a baby. It's true. Um, And conveniently, so many people in this game had the exact same basket to put the baby in. It's a very nice and famous basket in Onomichi. (laughs) That babies conveniently fit into. Yeah, it's the baby basket. <laughs> the baby basket. You know, for whatever somebody just comes into your establishment and needs to put down a baby. Or you gotta put a baby in a river or something. Hmm. And float it away. Yeah. Like, whatever that biblical story was. Exactly. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know the Bible. Who was that? Who was that who went down the river? I don't know. It's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely tell we were both raised religious. I mean, I was, and I don't remember. <laughs> So I was no, I was too. That's that's what I'm saying. Is it's hysterical that like we were both raised religious, but we literally came out knowing nothing about religion. Hey. That's what I. That was my point. Um, man, I don't remember, but there is a biblical story about that. I'm pretty sure there is. Yeah. Um, I just really like how the characters in this series are written. I like it a lot. Um, I mean, I think that's how they get you is that, like, you go into this thinking, like, oh, it's just cool dudes beating people up, but in reality, it's... And crime. It's a very emotionally charged crime drama. Yeah. With lots of soap opera elements. It's great. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if I were to... like list one theme of this game baseball. like if you ask if yes baseball <laughs> um if you asked me for one one word that would describe this whole game Pro it would be fa- it would be fatherhood same difference the same difference yes um because you have you have kiryu dealing with haruka um you have the whole situation with who is haruka's dad what are we going to do with that um but then we also have like, Bitsukeshi being, like, the 
replacement dad for all of his his kiddos that he's got around I, I say as if they're not like 40 years old um <laughs> in his uh in his family mm-hmm. um at the same and then you huh i was gonna say at the same time he has that like he wants that fatherly love from uh uh the patriarch of the the one family yep and then you have the the main villain guy who's like yeah my dad doesn't doesn't care about me and mm-hmm. my dad doesn't respect me my dad doesn't look into me then you have jimmy low and big low and big low um so i mean you you have functionally a lot of different types of fatherhood here but so but yeah um yeah cure you to daigo oh right cure you to daigo that whole letter that i was like oh cool he wrote a letter oh my god this is a daigo <laughs> and daigo even in Knowledge is being like, yeah, he's my dad. Mm-hmm. Which, even though I was upset that the letter was not to Haruka, I was like, you know what? I appreciate that this is what he thinks of Kiryu. Like, I, I'm glad that he considers him his dad because he really did try very, very hard to make sure that Daigo was was going to be able to stand on his own two feet. Mm-hmm. Like, he did a lot of lot of work on that. You know, had to take away that that poor puppy jacket. <laughs> Replace it with a suit jacket. Rip. Get rid of the like flashy cross necklaces and get a tie instead. <laughs> <laughs> no more leather pants for you, son. Those belong to Majima now. <laughs> <laughs> Majima's like, oh sweet, more leather pants. I don't have to work I don't have to be corporate Majima. <laughs> Uh, Corporate Majima was a mistake. Corporate Majima's cursed. <laughs> it's so cursed. <laughs> so cursed. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, so like... The whole game is really about that. Mm-hmm. And how how these different relationships come together. And um, like what it really means to, to be somebody's dad. Yep. It was good. And baseball. And, and pro baseball. wrestling. And pro wrestling. Justice spelled wrong. <laughs> I got to teach you about pro wrestling, and that was clearly the main goal here. Man, I know way more about pro wrestling than I ever thought I would ever know. See? But that's that's part of being friends with you. That was that was the secret main goal of playing these games. I was like, all right, I get the six and I get to teach her about wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I get to learn about Umi's husband. Yep. Before he was Umi's husband. Yep. Get to fight um, him and what his wrestling theme music plays. Oh my god. Which was real cool. Oh my god. Oh man. Um. Yeah, the baseball thing was wild. What was the really? Sh- name of the other team that the like rich man came in the with gorgeous or something the gorgeous there's a i don't know if you caught this but there's a guy outside of the batting center in judgment who is wearing that jersey what mm-hmm. no i didn't see that yeah how'd you not point that out to me i think it was when you're on the phone with your mom oh <laughs> that makes a lot of sense <laughs> toast, <laughs> toast. Um. yep <laughs> oh man um and i think that there's also some of that um not not baseball and wrestling but fatherhood um with (laughs) with uh the relationship that ends up really forming with kiryu and um fujiwara's character too i always forget yuta is that his name yeah okay um like they end up having like a a little bit of a like dadly rapport there for a bit Mm mm-hmm um, which, you know, sometimes you just got to be punched through a door first <laughs> before you can get the uh, approval of your your lady friend's dad. But you know, get the punch out, and then you're cool. It was the Yakuza version of the dad who brings the gun out when he first meets the the daughter's significant other. It really was because he's like, so. uh you banged my daughter, huh? 
cool. Let me just punch you through this door. Also, grow up. All right, we cool now? We're cool. All right, let's go. We're good. Let's go. Let's go. We got, we got things to do. And um, like he even clarifies at one point, like, I'm not mad at you for that. Like, a while ago, I'm mad at you for this thing now. <laughs> And I love that he even has to acknowledge that, like, I'm not mad at you now for banging my daughter. <laughs> I'm mad at you for being dumbass. <laughs> Which, like, oh my god, can you imagine, like... You, you're, you're hanging out with this girl, you, you get liking her, you end up doing the do with her, and then you find out, like, oh man, you have a secret baby with her, and her dad is the f Dragon of Dojima. Like, oh my god, would that not be the most terrifying thing in the entire universe? Like, that would be a moment that you just sh your pants. It'd be the most emasculating thing ever. <laughs> You're like, oh, oh no, I'm going to die now. Mm -hmm. This is how I die. I, I, you know, good thing I got to bang her because I am dead. Your I'm literally and pepperoni. dead. I am going to go swim with the fishies now. Um... Like, that would be the most intimidating thing I could possibly think of in this game. <laughs> is that you find out your girlfriend's dad is... Gary. Yep. Like, oh, hey, the fourth chairman! Oh, oh my god, my father-in-law is the fourth chairman. Oh, god. Uh... <laughs> uh, poor Yuta. He went through a lot in this game. He did. And... Also tried to set his dad on fire. <laughs> he did the, He did try to do that. Very, very drunkenly. <laughs> and then got his <laughs> kicked. Yeah, he really got his <laughs> kicked. Oh, boy. Um, But I do think that that's nice how they tie all of those together of, like, this is... These are the different ways that these relationships can form mm -hmm. and how they can look. And sometimes they're really bad. And sometimes they're actually a positive influence. And sometimes... Even though they're born out of something really negative, they can turn into something really good. Mm -hmm. um, and I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. And I appreciate. I appreciate Kiryu as a character in general. Like I think he is a very, very well written character across all the games. Totally. Um. Like he, he definitely has. He has a very, very strong arc in general, but he has some interesting growth um, that by by the time you get to this game, you're like, yeah, I understand why he is in this mindset now. I get it. And I think as well, like, it was the right time yeah. to end this arc. Because I think if you kept going with it, like, you're going to just make the character stale. Yep. And I think they were kind of, they were kind of getting to that by the time we got to, like, five and everything, where mm -hmm. just, like, they had to, like bring in more characters for you to play as so they wouldn't burn you out playing as Kiryu all the time. Mm -hmm. So, like, getting to this point, like like you said, like you get you really understand the mindset he's in and, like, why he makes the decision he does at the end of the game. And it makes sense why this is the, the culmination of his story. I do have hopes, and I mentioned this to you after we finish it, I do have hopes that, like, once everything dies down a bit, that he's able to have more of a relationship and come back, mm -hmm. even though he's technically dead. Um, because, obviously, spoilers for Seven, like, he's still around. He's still doing things. Yeah. He's just having to be covert and be no one when he's doing it. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think once things die down, he would be able to, like, not obviously like he's not gonna be able to run the orphanage or anything um but i think he'd be able to like visit yeah and see them which i think would be an important thing to him to like be able to see haruka and yuta and harto because harto was like holy crap it's my grandpa i'm gonna walk <laughs> um i always for some reason like my like head canon of kiryu like once things die down is like he goes back to onamichi yeah, no, I agree with you. Because, like, they, they make a big poignant point of when Haruka was there the first time, like, everyone mm -hmm. kept it a secret and, like, didn't bug her about her idol stuff or anything like that. Or, like, yep. the background that had been 
exposed into the media or anything like they just kind of kept it as is and didn't let people hound her or try to hound her or anything so like i think if he went back there people would do the same thing for him because of what he meant him now because of what he meant to them essentially at that point yeah and i think it would just be Uh an easy place to lie low no i completely agree with you and that's exactly what i was saying earlier is that i really just want him to go there Mm -hmm. like that would be a good place for him to retire yeah um like he could definitely lie low there. He's gonna be out of any any spotlight with with the yakuza, because um, there's not really a whole lot of focus there. I mean, like you you do have the very small family, and like they obviously know who he is, and they're gonna care about him. But um, like they're not gonna drag them in. They're not gonna drag him into their problems, and they're not gonna drag him into any like big clan issues right um but yeah i have the exact same headcanon that that's where he would go and i mean he seemed to genuinely like the place yeah um like after the initial like hostility went away he seemed to genuinely enjoy being around those people and enjoy being in the area and like i don't know maybe he just hangs out and gets paid and is the mascot now I mean, I could see it. Maybe that's what he does. I mean, like, that's a good way to lie low. Nobody ever sees your face. Yeah. You get paid money. Yeah. And you probably don't get paid a lot of money, but you get paid some money. He's got some money stashed up somewhere, probably. I'm sure he does. I mean, like, he hasn't technically, well, I guess he worked in five as a taxi driver, but, like, how much money did he make as a taxi driver? I'm sure the politician that tries to bribe him at the end gave him some hush money. I'm sure, yes. I am sure he did. Mm-hmm. Um, which, man, what a b- move at the end. It's just like, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. Unless you follow my conditions, you can walk out of this door, man. Yeah. It's like, man, you are. Those are, those are some intense ones you got there, buddy. <laughs> which, I mean, I guess you could have said that throughout the whole game, but totally. the whole series. Um, but yeah, I really, I really do like that idea of him going back there and lying low for a bit. And like I said, I, I do think that, um, um, at least in my mind, he would be able to visit eventually when things die down a bit. Mm-hmm. I don't know that Haruto would like remember who he is because Haruto is like 18 months old or something. Yeah. Um, but I think it would mean a lot to Haruto. And Yuta, too, because Yuta ends up, like, really liking him. Yeah. And, I don't know, maybe he gets to, like, write an occasional anonymous letter to the other kiddos that he helped raise for a bit. Hello. I am nobody. I am somebody that does not matter. How are you doing? Are you still a fan of that racist girl? You probably shouldn't be. (laughs) Have you have you bought any crazy outfits recently? Do you like to dress like me? Have you ate any buckwheat lately? You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. You're allergic. How's your wrestling career? <laughs> Is it going well? Uh. You know, fun anonymous letters. Yeah, exactly. From from the from the mascot of Automichi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. The return address is just like the the studio where they hang hang out with that that mascot. Yep. Everybody's like, "What is happening?" <laughs> <sighs> I love it. I love it. But yes, that's exactly what I think. Um, which I mean, Seven might mess with that a little bit. I don't think so. I don't really think they go into like where he is. Yeah. Or where he's been. Like, yeah. He just like says he's been around, isn't Julie? Yeah. So, I mean, he's obviously not completely off the grid. He's not off the grid enough for that people know where he can be found. Right. Yeah. At least important people. Yes. And that's the key is that he just needs important people to... Important people that could drag him back into things to not know that he's around. Mm -hmm. And, like, Akiyama knows because Date's a terrible liar it's true 
God, he's terrible. It's like, why would you, why would you leave Date with this secret, man? Date's not going to be able to keep that secret. Nope. And he even gets mad at him like, man, you left me with that responsibility? I can't do that. <laughs> but Akiyama was like, bruh. Bruh. One day you're going to tell me what exactly happened. One yeah. day. Did you actually see a body? Yes. Why did no one else get to see it? Well, he has no immediate family. Harka! <laughs> Akiyama's hysterical. <laughs> I love that dude. I also love how much he cares about Haruka, too. Like, I definitely feel like he would go and hang out at the orphanage for visits. Oh, yeah. He just, like, yeah, I just need to break from Sky Finance, whatever. <laughs> Hark is like, oh, did, did you take a shower? Because I'm not going to come pick you up in the airport unless you took a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Weird man. I love Akiyama. Honestly, like, he's one of my favorite characters in the Yakuza series just because he's so weird. But in a different kind of weird than, like, say, a Majima type character. Mm -hmm. He just kind of does whatever he wants to. And he's kind of unapologetic about it. Yeah. Um and like we were we were talking about like his his weird sewer days but like yeah he probably just like goes and hangs out with those guys sometimes just <laughs> living it up in the sewers <laughs> seeing how his buds are doing like I I could definitely see him doing that He's a weird guy. I love him to death. Little, little kicky man. Little kicky man. Um He's not in seven, is he? No. That's a shame. Big shame. I want to see more Akiyama at some point. Maybe you will at some point. Maybe I will. I hope so. But, um, yeah, I think that this game did a lot good. Um, I still think the boat thing is just bizarre. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like I told I also, you when, like, they were kind of starting to hype it up. I was like, this isn't going to pretty like, this isn't going to like end like really cool. Like they're trying to make you think it's going to, it's just like, you're like, eh, okay. Yeah. Um, which I mean, I was able to mostly piece it together and then I was like, that's stupid. Why would it ever be that? <laughs> well, turns out, turns out it was that, mm -hmm. um, Big old battleship. You like, sunk my battleship. They, what do you think they did with that thing? Like, what do you what do you do with that? Tear it down, I guess. I guess, like, scrap it for parts. I guess. Um, because like you kind of have to keep that under wraps that that was even a thing. Um, because yikes, that would cause an international crisis. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, like, I guess you could, like, turn it into a museum, but, like, a floating museum. Like, they've got, like, in, is it in Charleston? I think it's in South Carolina. It might be in North Carolina. It's one of the Carolinas. They've got, like, a, um, what are those things called where the airplanes land? Uh, aircraft or, carrier? Yes, aircraft carrier. Um, they've got a big one of those from, um, I think it's from World War II. But, um, like, you could technically do that kind of thing and be like, this is what the ship was like, because it's, um, uh, Yamamoto, is that the name of the ship? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it's bigger than the original one, but it's a similar construction and style. So you could be like, hey, look, this is kind of what it looks like. But then you're also kind of verging on the whole, like, yikes nationalism type thing. I think they have, like, an actual, like, there's a museum to the original Yamato oh, is there a museum Japan. for the original? Okay. I want to say that's the case. Um, Because, like, the cool thing about the one in whichever Carolina it's in, I literally cannot remember at this point, um, is that you can actually, like, walk through the entire ship. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, that was really, really cool to me because I was able to get more of an idea of, like, scale of, like, how claustrophobic it is, how hot it is. Yeah. Um, cause good lord, it was hot in there. We went in the middle of summer. Man, it's a hot one. Man, it's a hot one. Like, 
middle of summer in the Carolinas in a freaking aircraft carrier from World War II. It's like, oh my god, suffering. Can't believe they hadn't installed central AC yet. I know, wild. Why would they not do that? Um, but I mean, you really get a sense of like what it would be like to be on that ship, which is kind of cool. Um, so you could do something like that here, but also like again, this would probably cause an international crisis. So maybe just scrap it for parts. Yeah. Um. So that was that was a little bit weak. Um. I also wish they had done a little bit more build up on some of the villains. Same. I was actually going to bring that up. That like the ramp up to the villains becoming like, oh, we're big bads now. It kind of just feels like it's like you get to the end of the game. And it's like, oh, right. We got to push these guys in here somehow. Yeah. And they just like just turn the knob all the way up just to make them do bad things. So you, that you actually like dislike them essentially. And then it's like, okay, well, eventually you'll go fight them. Like, ripped nerd man like i don't really know a whole lot about him other than his dad didn't really love him enough yeah, um, his dad didn't like him enough and he was just uh he wanted the piece of that pie and became just i guess too power hungry when yeah. he was denied it every time yeah um and then like there was the guy who was dying the whole time the politician, the, like, the, yeah, the guy who like funded the boat, yeah. And like, I get that that's what he was doing. It's like he was responsible for that whole thing, and people were involved with him, and he was really making sure behind the scenes that like this never got out. But like, there was really no information on that guy, and they just kept showing him like, "Hello, I'm actively dying. What up?" <laughs> and I'm just like. I don't I don't know enough about you to even really care about this. You're just a guy that I'm told is important for reasons. Reasons. And like they make it seem like he's like this giant mastermind. But like he's basically in a coma the whole game. <laughs> So is he really a giant mastermind, or are they just using him as a scapegoat? I think it's a little bit of both, because like the only thing you really see him do is like tell um, Suneo to like kill Kiryu. Yeah. But then like outside of that, it's just like here's this old dude in a bed. <laughs> in a bed. Sleepy. Actively dying. Sleepy old man. Um. So that's that was kind of weird. Um, you at least had a little more build up for the older guy, um, the big bad's dad. Mm -hmm. You had a little bit more build up on him. Yeah, and you had a little bit more build up on Big Low, which I wouldn't even consider him like a villain per se. Yeah, he's just kind of there. He's just kind of there, but you did get some information on him. Yeah. Um, you actually find out more about like Jimmy Low than you do Big Low, really. Jimmy Low. Jimmy Low. Um, which man? Jimmy Low. What a name. What a name. What a name. Like I think the two characters, like or at least villain characters, they get right are Beat Takeshi's mm -hmm. and Somaya. Because mm -hmm. those, I think, both have like layers to them. And, you know, it's built up over the course of the game. Somia specifically is really built up over the course of the game. Yeah. Where, you know, he's just like this punk upstart who doesn't care about Kiryu or anything. And then gets beat back a little bit by Kiryu and starts to kind of like, eh, you know, maybe this guy isn't so bad. Especially like when they're like, oh, you have to go kill him now. And yeah. then they have that, that really amazing fight in the Millennium Tower and everything. And then he has that moment where he's like... Well, I'm going to kill myself so my ex-wife doesn't die. Yeah, that was rough. He gives himself the stabby stab. He gives himself the stabby stab. Um. Yeah, he definitely got way more development, and I actually liked his development. Like, yeah, he he's he's still a butt, but um, like he is a person who has clearly done bad things. 
Yes. I think they kind of make it seem that he's at least learned a little bit from it. Yeah. Um. He definitely has regrets. Yeah. Um, and like, I think I told you when it was going down when we were playing it, um, like one of the things that he tries to make clear is like, I never hit our daughter. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, cool, bro, but you still hit her. So it doesn't really make you better, but like he wanted it to be clear to her. Like, I did not do that. Like, like I learned from my mistake. Yeah. And so I appreciated that part of him and I appreciated like how far he was willing to go to, I mean, like it was kind of for nothing, but I appreciate how far he was willing to go to protect his family. Um, even though they were estranged and. Cause it was still someone he clearly cared about, even yeah. though like they had this estranged relationship and she definitely didn't want anything to do with him and rightfully so, but Correct. he, he still wanted to be like, you know, Hey, you can come see your daughter if you want. She's like, nope, don't want to. He's like, okay, see you later. Um, but yeah, like he definitely like goes to the most extreme ends to just like try and protect her at the end. Yeah. And, and so I really, really liked him. Um, another character that I think really could have used work was um, the, the guy who actually was like doing the shooting at that part. Mm hmm. I was like, who the heck are you and why do you He matter? was just essentially the guy that um, uh, Kirisu was going to, was like supposedly grooming to be the next chairman of the Yome. Mm -hmm. And then supposedly Suneo gets into his ear and is like, oh, join me instead. And then he just joins the other group essentially to be like their hitman, I guess. And then he gets his nose flattened. And then he gets his nose flattened. But like, he, he's just kind of like a cartoony villain type character. Yeah. And then, like, they don't really explain why he did the blanks, really, at all. They're just kind of like, I guess he grew a conscience, essentially, is basically what they think. Yeah, and I'm like, um, oh, okay, I guess. I think you guys just didn't want to kill her off, which, like, that's valid. Um, but, like, he wouldn't have really had time to do that, like, after the whole... I don't know, it was weird. Um, like, it would have to be premeditated. Yeah, it would have had to. He was going to go in there and does not do that. Which is odd. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know who that guy is or why he's important, really, other than like what you just told me. That's that's what they tell you in the game. That's basically it. So, so yes, that um, and then as you mentioned, B. Takashi um was a very well done villain, and I, I wish there had been a way that he was like the actual big bad. Yeah. Um, but I also understand that, like, the way that he went down in this game is a significant way for him to go down. Mm -hmm. um, and it also has him basically reflecting on, like, I've made some really bad mistakes over the years, and for what? Nothing. They basically also try and do, like, the parallel, like, try to parallel him with Kazuma. Yeah. At the end there, we're like, oh, he's like, oh, by the way, I killed your parents and everything. That's why you were in the My Yakuza. Blah. But, and even, um, like, they have a talk later that they have a very similar situation to Kiryu and that, like, yeah, I should be mad about this because, like, he killed my parents, but also he's the only dad I really knew. Mm -hmm. And, like, I still very much care about him, even if there's complicated feelings there. And, like, Kiryu basically has that exact same relationship. Yeah, 100%. Um, like, that's... He he learned that, oh, wow, your parents died because of me. Yay, I raised you. But, like, who he is as a person is because he was taken and raised. And, like, his entire way of life became because of that. Right. For better or worse, like, you know, it, it shaped him into who he is. Mm -hmm. And so th there's, there's the parallel there that I really did appreciate. Um. And, and I do think that there is some kind of, like, poetic justice there in the sense that he's like, yeah, so that was the secret, huh? Not sure it's really worth killing all those guys over. <laughs> yep. They were my friends. Really cared about them. That was it. Heck. <laughs> you didn't actually really care about me that much, did you? Nope. Well, I'll be 
guess I'm just gonna die then. But um, like that that had some poetic justice to it, and it had some like interesting ways to wrap up his story. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like he was a much those two were much better written villains than the actual villains of the game. Yeah, I would completely agree with you on that. Like your your stepping stone villains were better villains. Mm-hmm. It uh, it kind of came across in a way of like the the whole like JRPG JRPG trope of like, oh, you thought I was the big bad, but actually it's this guy who's been mentioned like five times, and here he is, woo! Mm-hmm. Go take him down. Um, it, it, it felt a lot like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was like the big major thing that I kind of realized replaying this game mm-hmm. was that, you know, the villains, the big, big villains at the end kind of just fall flat compared to some of the other ones like yeah. we talked about. Yeah, I mean, there's some really good characters in this game and mm-hmm. those guys are not it. Yeah. Ripperoni. Um, I've also seen... And I, I wanted to ask you your opinion on this. I've seen on the internet since we beat it. Oh, um, no. I I know going on the internet's a terrible idea. Not the internet. Um, but I, I've seen some opinions, and I want to know your opinion on it. Um, that a lot of people thought that he should have just died outright. I have seen that as well. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people expected that. I think that's the thing. I think a lot of people expected that too, because when you when you bill it as the end of his story. Like, it's one and, of those things where, you, like, you going into this, you think, like, how are they going to get him out of this, like, story-wise? Yeah. And the easy way to do that is just to kill him off. hmm So I think that was kind of, like, the mindset a lot of people going into this were thinking, and they basically bait you into thinking that as well. Yep. Um, But I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it, too. I really just want him to, like be happy and i don't know get some plants get some therapy like maybe a lot of therapy <laughs> um and just like be able to relax a little bit and not have to like constantly be worrying about like how am i going to fix this or how am i going to fix that or what am i going to do here like yeah, the dude just needs a nap yeah like I think to me it just it makes sense that he would have he would basically make this ultimate sacrifice yeah to protect people he cares about rather than himself mm-hmm. and just to have him like go off and disappear seems like if you're not going to kill him that seems like the only other way you can narratively write him out of the story yeah I agree and I mean once he realized like they're never gonna stop targeting Haruka and now she has a family and they're targeting her because of me like I can't I can't stand for that yeah um and I mean I I I get some of what they're talking about of like oh you know that would be a a a way that he would be okay going out um and I think that he would because like we see at the end of it that he was ready like he was he went into that fight thinking like i'm not coming out of this and ended up taking like three bullets i think and also like a lead pipe to the noggin multiple times Mm -hmm. that man had so many concussions i'm sure um like he got messed up and he went in knowing that that was going to happen so like i don't know that he really expected to live through that yeah um and and i'm i'm thinking that you know he really didn't have a whole lot of options at the point like he lived through it he didn't expect to he's like okay now what (laughs) yeah so he's like all right well shoot what do i do now and then this guy's like how about I just give you this great scenario where you can uh, give me conditions where you can technically die. He's, He's like, like, cool. I'll take that. 
Dante's like, no, 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 no. Um. But I mean, I'm I'm definitely okay with this. Um. I really just want him to be like a happy old man who doesn't have to deal with any of these shenanigans and like eventually be able to go hang out with Haruka and all the kids and Yuta and Haruto. And also I want him to like be able to hang out eventually with Daigo again. Mm -hmm. Like once Daigo's not in that situation, you know, I, I think that it would be really nice, but I, I really want him to just be able to go somewhere and like live and have peace and quiet. Yeah. I think that'd be nice for him. Yeah. I completely agree. Give him back his Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the one thing um, we need. It's it's the one thing we need. Like he's just he's 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 been through a lot. Yep. And um I think that now that I really know his story that that moment in seven is going to be a lot cooler for me. Oh, dude. Once I get there. Totally. <laughs> um, so, like, I already know that it's coming because I've seen it. But, like, I think it's going to be way more impactful for me than it was. I mean, you saw, I saw how I reacted you. to it. Yeah, you lost your mind. I mean, rightfully so. So, I'm sure you will also be like, this is very cool. But I was like, who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> we got to fight him. Okay. He's nobody. Yeah, he's just some dude. Some, some guy. I'm, I'm just a guy. Yeah, I mean... This poor man. He's been through a lot. <laughs> Haruka has two. Haruka needs a break. Every surviving member of these games has been through a lot. Yes, that is, that is very, very fair. Everybody needs therapy. True, and that's for true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Also, the karaoke song in this, song, in this game is great. Yes. Very cheerful. Very fun. I agree. I got that great, like, thumbs up <laughs> picture. It's very good. It's very, very good. Well. It's amazing. I believe that's Shock is the six. Yeah, because the six. We we did the thing. Now I have one last question to ask you. All right, ask me. Where does Yakuza Six rank in your ranking of Yakuza games? Oh geez, I haven't really thought about this yet. Oh no. <laughs> what is my old ranking? I don't it's remember. Like zero, I think it's like zero and two are at the top, right? That sounds right. And I think Four might be my least favorite. That also sounds right. <laughs> With like one, three, five and five and three. In, in the middle somewhere. Yeah. Where would I put this for ranking? <sighs> um, my gut feeling. And that's what they tell you to go with your gut. I'm gonna go with my gut. Um, zero six two. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. I really like what they did with a lot of the characters in this game. Like there are some missteps for sure, but like the characters in this game really, really sell it. Yeah. And I. I very much enjoy how they are able to characterize Kiryu in this, and I, I like that that was... I like the build-up for it quite a bit. Yeah. I think that was very, very well done. Also, you have beat Takeshi, so, like... True. Plus, you have baby rugby. True. So, like, there's a lot of pluses here in this plus column. Uh, so, yeah, my gut says 0 6 two. There you go. What about you? I, I'm not going to answer that. I <laughs> What? I don't know is the thing. Like it could I think for me it's just very interchangeable. Like those are the top 3 I would I would agree with you. Yeah. I just don't know where they would go cuz it would, it could change tomorrow. I mean, mine could change tomorrow too. I was just going with my initial yeah. gut. 
What would your initial gut say? I don't know is the thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I might go zero two six. I think that's still valid. But I don't know. That's just, you know. It is what it is. But like but I agree. Like I think those are the top three. Yeah, those are definitely top three. Well, we finally reached the end of Al Experiences, the Yakuza series. Mm-hmm. Now I'm running a business. Now you're running a business. You are. <laughs> uh, we're still, we are, like we said earlier, we are going to play through Judgment so you can be prepared for Lost Judgment coming later this year. And mm-hmm. also because it's technically a Yakuza game. Let's be real. Yeah. And because of that, it is going to be an Al Experiences situation. Because mm-hmm. um, we. Al- I can't do that combat style. Because we did talk about it uh, two years ago, so. Yeah. Um, but I also just can't do that combat stuff. And. Yeah. But you can do seven, which you are going through now. I can do seven. I've been, I've been killing it. And by killing it, I mean saving constantly and then going to get in <laughs> fights to see if I can make it. Yay! Usually, usually doing fine. I'm a little over leveled at the, at this point, but for that's, now, that's, for now. <laughs> um, but also, like, it's me. So, are you really shocked by that? No. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe we'll check back in with you once you're done, and we'll get your final thoughts on seven. Yeah. When that comes around, but for now, I think that's going to wrap up this episode. Mm-hmm. So if you would like more from us, head on over to SeasonalAnimeCheckup.com or SAC.cool. It's where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Jared and Al Watch. You can also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Anladium, go to Anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at AnimeCheckup. You can buy our books, One Shining Moment, a critical analysis of Love, Life, Sunshine, and Hot Tubs and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. And you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash S-A-C-O-V-A. Buy us a slice of pizza, get access to unedited versions of the podcast early, and a wealth of bonus episodes as well. And I picked a new movie, so you guys have something to look forward to soon. It's true. Whenever we get around to watching it. It is true. And it's not a new movie for me, but it's new for the Patreon episode. And me. It is brand new for you. And me. (laughs) <laughs> next time I guess because it's coming out this week or it's already come out by the time you were listening to this we're going to probably talk about that Dynasty Warriors film <laughs> oh shoot yeah I have it in my calendar to watch it you I'm do I'm hype about it oh man because I figured that would be a good dumb thing to talk about so I'm assuming that's going to be a really dumb thing <laughs> yo I am I am so hyped to watch that it's probably going to be stupid dumb and I am ready for it or it'll just be bad, and we can just be like, "Man, what if we, what if this was better?" I mean, it could still be it could still be funny. It's true. Even if it's bad. Either way. And then we have the Resident Evil series coming out soon too on Netflix. Mm-hmm. So, um, some some things that are watchable. Yes, yeah, some things that are watchable coming soon. I cannot wait to see how this Dynasty Warriors film is. I it's, really cannot wait. It's really going to be something. So tune in next week if you want to hear our thoughts about whatever that Dynasty Warriors film ends up being. <laughs> the Musou Queen will tell you thoughts featuring Jared. Yes. 